I'm standing here with my friend Jacqueline, yes. who is the sales director. Coordinator. Coordinator yes. for the Kempinski Hotel. Yes. And tell me about the Kempinski. Yes, well, uh, recently um, this hotel has joined the Kempinski Hotels and Resorts. Uh, it was officially opened in June 1999. Uh, we have a total of 106 rooms, uh, virtually all suites. Uh, it's typically based on a Maltese farmhouse style. We have a wonderful marine care center, which has been certified by Talgo in Paris to be the best in the Mediterranean. And we even have an Ayurveda center, which is an ancient Indian care, uh, basically using therapy oils. Uh, we have a wonderful main swimming pool. With uh, translucent water. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we have a wonderful uh, Mediterranean-style restaurant as well as an Italian-style restaurant. Uh, we have a coffee shop as well, and um, basically... You know what I like about it? The spa. The yes. spa because you can it's, relax. It's one of the largest spas in the Mediterranean. Yeah, and what yeah. I think people come here for is to relax. Exactly. And the environment tranquility, lends yes. itself to tranquility. Exactly. We're continuing our journey through the island of Gozo in Malta. This is an overview of the hotel and spa Sala Raz on the island of Gozo. place as you can see so many people around us and in Dwira very famous for the tourists would be the Azur window or known to the majority of the tourists the window in the cliff that is it's all made by nature and here in Dwira we have as well the fungus rock where a special type of mushroom used to grow a long time ago during medieval times not anymore nowadays the citadel over here we have the main cathedral of the island of Gozo. It is dedicated to the Assumption of Our Lady. There you can see the statue depicting the Assumption of Our Lady. From the outside it is in Baroque style and it is without any decorations rather than the statue itself. But from the inside it is highly decorated as we've seen in Valletta. Yes. Over here the floor that is the marble slabs are reserved for the bishops of Gozo, the high priests of Gozo and their own families and as well benefactors here who donated rich families who donated a lot of money for sort of restoration and decorating of this cathedral. As you can see it goes high up on the steps to be elevated from the ground. So during excavations done here in Gozo they explored and they found over here ruins of two temples. One of Yuno and the other one of Astarte. Now Astarte she, um, was a Phoenician god and Yuno was a Roman goddess. Mm -hmm. So it means that when the Phoenician and when even the Romans were on the Maltese islands, they used this part of the island of Gozo as the main, the most center. important, the main center and the most important part of the island to build their own temple. So the cathedral we see today, this was built between the years 1697-1711. The designer of this, or the architect of this cathedral, was Lorenzo Gaffa. Lorenzo Gaffa was one of the main architects at the time. But, but the people to... of the community still contributed their time, yes. they volunteered yes. to build yes. it. Yes, lots of them did. So most of the work was done voluntary as well. Ramla il Hamra is Arabic. Ramla meaning the sandy beach, Hamra meaning the color of red. Since the sandy beach here seems to be a bit reddish. These 
These ladies are continuing the tradition of making lace. It's another way for them to socialize. Maltese immigrants, when they come to Malta, they always make it a must to visit Tapino Sanctuary or the other one at Isla in Singlea, Malta, Tar Tour, the Redeemer Church. So, over here we can see the picture, the, oh, yes. the main altar painting of mm -hmm. Tapino, and they're in connection with the Pope. When the Pope visit, uh, was he, he was here in 1990, the first time in Malta, and he sort of celebrated a special mass over here. But he came again last year, today, last oh. year, exactly. Oh, really? when, the 9th yes, of May Yes, the 9th of May last year, 8th and 9th of May he was mm -hmm. here. And it was the first time that he um, uh, proclaimed three Maltese people as the first saints from Malta. Don George Brega, Nazio Fanzon, and Adeodata Pisani. Now, back to the Tapinu church. You can see over here on the side chapels, very nice mosaic yes. altar works. In the other churches, usually it is painted, the altar painting, mm -hmm. but this is These all are, mosaic, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. They date to when? They date to about 1920, 1930. Oh, then see, the war right. started, they had to stop, they didn't have lots of money, then they started recreating, redecorating again the oh. church later on. After the war. No? But oh. Gozo wasn't bombed during Second World War. Maltese Islands, when we say Maltese Islands were heavily bombed during the Second World War, it means next to Valletta, the yes. Grand Harbour, and the southern part of Malta. Yeah. Right? In Mosta, where I live, it was because they had the British military airport, which nowadays is converted into a handicraft centre. Uh -huh. Over here, maybe only a few bombs in the, in the vicinity of Gozo Fell, mm -hmm. more in the sea than on the island itself, mm -hmm. because it had no military base on the island. Yes. And it was Although, a farmland. Yes, it was yeah. more farmland and agriculture, and in fact, lots of Maltese from the southern part of Malta came over to Goto, either to the center part, like Mosta Bukikara, or otherwise north part of Malta, Meliha, and then to Goto. But in Goto, usually, the majority of the, the ladies do lace, make uh -huh. lace, right? Mm -hmm. Before, in older times, one could see so many ladies at the corners in all oh. streets making lace, yes. right? It is a tradition, it is a bit staying out, but the young ones usually, they do not prefer to do it on the outside, do it in the oh. house itself. There are some schools nowadays, especially for lace making, but if they make lace, it is only for their own personal use, like a nice tablecloth for mm -hmm. the house and so on. But the men here in Gozo, they say that the men used to do lace making, but not with silk, but with the stone. You can oh, see the stonework see. over here, the yes. very nice stoneworks all over, all yes. over the arches, right? And the very nice ceiling, although it is where it's not painted like the one in Valletta or the one in Indina, but it is very nice to look at. The Mosta church originally, there used to be a smaller church over here. But then this big church was built between the years 1833, 1860. So it took them 27 years to be completed from the outside the shelf one. At least 50 years to decorate it from the inside. In fact, the Mosta church, it's the first roundish building on the island of Malta. In fact, it is referred to as the Rotunda. The Mosta church is a copy of the Pantheon in Rome. Now, the reason is, the architect, Georges Cronier de Fazer, who was responsible for designing this church, studied for several years in Rome. He was always fascinated by the Pantheon. The people at that time, living in Mosta, 1833, or a bit before, they wanted to have a bigger church, since the church that they had before was small in size. It wasn't big enough for the population at that time. So, he offered his plan, and so he submitted his plans, and so his plans were chosen. So, this church, the Mosta church, from the outside, the dome is built in a step, in a staircase form. That is, all the steps bend inwards, and the steps are wide enough for a blindfolded mule or donkey to carry more stone blocks, then built at the higher level. After demolishing the ramps, then, during these 27 years, they still had the church, the older church, over here, standing in the middle of this church. So.